بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم ٹوڈے یو کین ناٹ سی می اینڈ آئی تھنک دس از گڈ فار یو اینڈ فار می بیکاز یو شیل بی فوکسنگ آن وٹ آئی سی اینڈ وٹ از دیئر ان فرنٹ آف یو ان ان دس لائٹس آئی ہوپ یو ریمبر وی آر ڈسکسنگ دی مین پیراگوجیکل اپروچز فار ٹرانسلیشن and in the previous lecture we discussed uh, some basic points in introduction and also we did, we, we we tried to um, get some orientation about the discussion uh, among the scholars about what is a translational error so linking up with that translation error basically we are discussing the error oriented approach so from there we went to the definition of error so and then we reached uh, to the point where we have some uh, concept of error and then uh, the next point is the causes of errors and problems in translation uh, the the researchers there are two three researchers uh, whose work uh, has been cited here in this uh, chapter Uh, and they found that uh, these are the main causes of errors number 1 is interference number 2 is fear of interference number 3 is faulty one to one correspondence number 4 is misuse of bilingual dictionaries number 5 is misuse of world knowledge and one's own experiences number 6 incomplete paraphrasing and we shall be discussing all these causes of problems in this lecture uh the the note on the causes uh, as i said the the two three the work of two three scholars have been uh, have been in, in cited here or included here in this chapter so these causes are approximate diagnosis not ultimate truths and this is not a closed list addition is possible but based on research of course and all categories are based on the meaning of words six causes of errors all are based on the meaning of words so let's start interference what do we mean by interference uh, there are uh, alternative uh, terminologies used for interferences linguistic interference li in short and cross linguistic interference where the two languages of course actually linguist, linguistic interference is involves two languages at least linguistic interference means transfer of linguistic features between language by the bilingual and multilingual individuals we shall see some examples after this page interference are the cause of frequent errors one cause of frequent translation errors a uh, famous examples is the so called false friends uh, there are two types of false friends those uh, which always turn out to be false they are very deceptive and they deceive the translator those which can sometimes be good friends let's see some uh, examples to understand uh, uh, the the interference false friends and good friends uh, both uh, examples of false friends here i think ta'malu ukhti fi mustashfa and if we translate it in this way my sister works in hospital instead of my sister works in a hospital so the point of interference or linguistic interference fairness is here that in the original arabic sentence ta'malu ukhti fi mustashfa we don't have any clear sign which stands for a as we have seen in the english translation my sister works in a hospital uh, but if it is translated my sister works in hospital uh, this shows that the uh, the translator and uh, most probably of course is the native arabic speaker uh, understands the english uh, uh, structure or the language rules according to his or her own native language which is arabic in this case 
The next example, Ana askunu fil Bahraini. I live in the Bahrain uh, because uh, there is Alif Lam, which is uh, tarif for a proper noun. And in English, we use T-H-E for uh, the proper noun. So instead of I live in Bahrain, I live in the Bahrain. And this interference, you know, I mean the Alif Lam, Lam al tarif of Arabic, interfering in the English translation of this sentence in the shape of T-H-E, D. Uh, we can also take another example. For Urdu, we have uh, abundant, uh, you know, uh, words in, uh, in Arabic word in Urdu. We use them, although the, mostly the meanings are different. So we say, Mukarra Nisab in Urdu. And if I say it, if I translate the word nisab as uh, on the basis of my assumption that nisab is Arabic word, borrowed from Arabic, used in Urdu, but it's originally Arabic word, so I would say nisab al muqarrar. Whereas in, in in Arabic, the the word nisab, Urdu nisab, of course, uh, is translated or is uh, is said as al manhaj. So. So the correct is al manhaj al muqarrar but there is interference uh, from the the word which was basically originally Arabic, but it was borrowed into Urdu, used in different uh, meanings, and then now I am using it for this. Uh, so I'm I'm actually committing this mistake in this translation because of this interference. So all these actually are examples of the interferences. We can say that uh, they are uh, examples of, uh, of, of, the, of the false friends, not the good friends. Uh, we can also think about uh, the examples of the good friends not written here. But we know the, the Arabic words mostly used uh, for the religious purposes are good friend for us. As we don't have to think about how to translate as salat we, we don't have to think about how to translate a sound. We don't have to have any, you know, problem in, in translating if we see a word of uh, a zakah and al hajj as we have adopted all these terminologies in Urdu with the same meanings. So they are, so they are good friends. The second uh, cause of uh, error, translational error, is fear of interferences. Uh, it is mostly part of the mental make of the novices and semi-professionals, those who are uh, in the beginning of learning translation or those who have, uh, you know, learned some translation and at intermediate level or maybe some advanced level, early advanced level. And uh, also lack of knowledge, experience and confidence on part of the translator. So... Knowledge is very important, fear of interference, experience is very important, and third is the, is the confidence is also very important to avoid such uh, fear of interference. Uh, fear of interference, the, the, they may be detected upon minute revision, because the fear of interference is, uh, uh, from the research point of view, from the teaching point of view, cannot be detected easily. Uh, we have to we have to uh, uh, do um, extra effort to find out that there was a fear of interference for which this mistake was committed. The reason number three is faulty one-to-one -one correspondence, and this is the biggest cause, in my view, or out, at least in the light of my teaching experiences. And the reason for this is the variety of meanings uh, of one single word. You open the dictionary, you find a lot of, uh, you find uh, eight to ten meanings for a single word. And not to talk about uh, the verbs or the nouns that are very dynamic, I'm talking about maybe some type of prepositions, they have different shapes, different meanings. So, skill to select the appropriate word, uh, mostly, most difficult lies if the tar target language is the second or foreign language like Arabic and English for us. If we are translating from Urdu into Arabic or English, we face this problem because we are dealing with 
we our production actually if we are producing the language in the second language a foreign language in our case uh, less difficulty if we are translating or in our case we are translating uh, from arabic or english into our own language which is urdu so the left difficulty if target language is the mother tongue or national tongue language of the student uh, let's see the example uh, in this uh, very uh, short example we see ad-din al-islami yuhu ad-din al-yusri wal-fawz wal-najah yadmanu karamat al-insani Uh, although uh, you see a translation of this uh, sentence uh, islamic religion is a religion of ease winning and success it ensures human dignity and if you see uh, al yusr and you find all these uh, words in front of uh, you know, use in the dictionary so al yusr easiness facility freedom breeze readiness al fawz is is victory success gain cons, conquest triumph najah achievement fame etc and karama respect rank honor status and also likewise in the word yadmanu if you consult the dictionary you find uh, at least 6 7 words in front of this point here is which word is most suitable here in this context ad din islami huwa din al yusri the dictionary is providing this word is breeze is also so can i use the word breeze or even freedom for example and if i say islamic religion is a religion of freedom uh, you know see the 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 consequent uh, the resultant resultant image that is uh, of course uh, uh, that is attained by the readers when they read this translation if i use this word freedom for a user and al fawz if i say al fawz is victory and uh, mind you the victory is related to the wars or the games sports and also an najah and uh, an najah is what is what is is uh, you know success or achievement or fame i hope you are following me because i am talking about uh, the 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 cause which is related to the to the selection of most appropriate word among the available uh, words for a single source text word uh, number 4 is misuse of bilingual dictionaries uh, and the point here is that too much reliance is not that you do not use the dictionary you should as a student as a teacher but too much reliance on bilingual dictionaries and uh, also non critical use of dictionaries or misconception that dictionaries are the final authority uh, in translation actually dictionaries are a good tool good assistance but uh, you know a good translator uh, does not rely on on the dictionary and sometime he or she uh, understand the text correctly and finds a word or he or she has a uh, better word in his or her mind but uh, because that particular word does not exist in the dictionary the no wise translators or the translator at intermediate level they do not uh, prefer using the word that does not exist in the dictionary so this but i found it in the dictionary syndrome usually the students they Uh, they, they, their argument or their plea always is for their uh, for their uh, mistake in this regard is that this is the word which I found in the dictionary, but the misuse is there. Number five, misuse of world knowledge and one's own experience. Uh, reason is that translators have perceived ideas about text text type and pragmatic analysis uh, sentences words are part of larger entities having specific pragmatic functions this should be very clear for the translator trainers and for the translator translation students as well uh, what may be true in uh, source language may not apply to the target language so these are the main points related to the misuse of world knowledge and one's own uh, experience while translating 
we can take uh, one example and I would add uh, another example here. Uh, see this example. For example, if uh, before I talk about the example, go back to the previous page and see these keywords. We are talking about the pragmatic function. Pragmatic function, which is the practical function of, uh, of, of a language utterance. And in this, uh, suppose this uh, language utterance in Arabic, Akramaka, Aw Azaka, Aw Hayakallah, Akramakallah, Azakallah, Hayakallah, uttered in this, uh, in a social gathering uh, dominated by the, uh, the English native speakers. And the pragmatic requires uh, a kind of uh, translation which is which which serves this uh, situation and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh if you translate akramakallah you want to say may allah honor you azzakallah may allah give you dignity hayyakallah may allah give you life and assalamu alaikum and if you want to translate in this uh, you know uh, i mean peace be upon you and allah's mercy and his blessing uh, upon you and everything you know we all uh, tend to translate these sentences in this way but the point here would be the same that we are misusing our world knowledge and our own experience why because we are not considering the pragmatic function of these sentences in this particular situation so uh, for example akramakallah azzakallah hayyakallah one solution could be God bless you and enough and then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh which is uh, maybe according to the situation maybe uh, welcome good morning hi even hi you know the most important thing is that the translator understand the the practical aspects of that gathering or the pragmatic aspects of that of, of gathering and who is uh, sitting there what is the requirement of that situation so misuse of uh, world knowledge and one's own experience is another cause um, I give you another example here if I am translating from Arabic into into English uh, into, into Urdu my own language if we the Arabic sentence is like this uh, if I see this uh, in Arabic and uh, I translate this as kabir aizan also into into Urdu, I, I think I am uh, you know I'm not uh, I'm not really aware of, of 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 the situation here in Urdu because. The personality of, uh, of Abu Bakr Siddiq is well known, well respected and perhaps I don't need to say as Sahabi, no, don't need to translate the, this uh, phrase as Sahabi al Kabir. Uh, and it's enough that I say Abu Bakr Siddiq and, and, the, and the readers in Urdu readers, they know the status, the stature and, and the services of, uh, of uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq I hope that this is also clear. Incomplete uh, paraphrasing is another cause of translational error. What is paraphrasing first? So paraphrasing is providing additional phrases or words that explains that uh, ease the, the sentences. Paraphrasing is, is a restatement of the meaning of a text or passage using other words. Uh, in the past, paraphrasing and translation were considered to be unconnected language processing tasks. Of course, forget this, past is past. But the concept of paraphrasing in general is that this is restatement, rewording uh, with the addition of some phrases and the purpose is to, you know, make things clear, make things uh, understandable and uh, readable for the readers. But what, what do we mean by paraphrasing in translation? We mean it is a strategy. So we are defining paraphrasing in translation. It is a strategy 
to preserve linguistic naturalness, smoothness, easiness, easiness, fluency. Let's say let's call this word fluency as well. To preserve linguistic fluency or naturalness of target language by rewording the words, sentences, paragraphs, and passages. And for all the practi practical purposes, this if uh, there is a problem in paraphrasing uh, from the reader's point of view, from the client's point of view, from uh, the scopo's point of view, this is considered a, a kind of uh, translation or cause which causes uh, an error in, in translation. Uh, students, you know, are taught to translate the text in steps. What happens actually in complete paraphrasing, why it occurs because the students are taught to translate the text in the steps. They comprehend the source text first, then they recognize the text type, whether this is uh, legal text or medical text, what kind of terminologies are there in this text. And then they try to find the correspondences of those words into the target language. And then they convert it into the target language. Uh, paraphrasing in this sequence, as you can see, uh, is the last step. And uh, no, no, in the beginning, the students are taught how to, uh, maybe the first step, they, they are taught how to translate the sentences literally, because this is the basic requirement at that stage. But then, you know, with the passage of time, they are taught how to comprehend the source text and then text type and finding the correspondence including the terminologies and the structural requirements and etc. But paraphrasing being the last step in the sequence is usually neglected in the teaching process and this is the point here and we need to understand as teachers we need to understand that paraphrasing or training for para paraphrasing or translational paraphrasing is very very important. Uh, from the commercial point of view, as I said, from the reader's point of view, from the client's point of view, from the scopo's point of view. Uh, we can take one example here for, uh, for understanding the significance of, uh, of uh, paraphrasing. Uh, original uh, sentences here. Suppose that it, it is translated sentence from, let's say from Arabic, from Urdu. Her life spanned years of incredible change for women. Her life spanned years of incredible change for women. We can just imagine here that this sentence has been translated from a language, uh, from a structure of the language which imposes this uh, order. Her life, for example, spanned... Uh, uh, and we, 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 we can just imagine as I said in Urdu or in Arabic as if the Urdu or the, or the Arabic was the source language uski zindagi uski zindagi tabdili guzri tabdili guzri but now see if we paraphrase this, paraphrase this sentence into English so we have this model here she lived through an era of liberating reform for women. And uh, she lived through an era of liberating reform from, for women. I know that uh, some of you would object this kind of uh, paraphrasing. And we can have discussion on that. And I would love to have discussion on this kind of paraphrasing. Because nothing is final in, in as for the translation strategies are concerned. There are a lot of strategies uh, available in the literature and paraphrasing as a strategy is very interesting uh, um, strategy is good for a certain uh, contexts and perhaps uh, we can criticize this strategy uh, in, in, in another uh, or some other situation Uh, we can also see another example of paraphrasing in Arabic. Uh, the original, uh, the original uh, translated text is like this: "يمكن القول أن الإدارة عملية متميزة تتكون من التخطيط والتنظيم والتشكيل والتوجيه والرقابة." 
تنجز أو تنجز لتحديد وتحقيق الأهداف عن طريق أفضل استخدام ممكن للقوى البشرية والموارد الأخرى. And the text after paraphrasing is this: يا رفولان. We can start with this: يا رفولان. أن الإدارة هي عبارة and you can see تتكون من try to match the colors. تتكون من and هي عبارة عن مجموعة من paraphrased. Addition of words, change in the structure. الوظائف المتمثلة دي in this single word عملية has been paraphrased as الوظائف المتمثلة في التخطيط والتنظيم والتوجيه والتشكيل والرقابة. You can see that these words have not been changed because they are terminologies, established terminologies. And in paraphrasing, terminologies are not changed. والتي تعمل تنجز this this passive voice Arabic word has been converted into this phrase والتي تعمل على تحقيق أهداف معينة من خلال الاستغلال الأمثل للموارد so the word القوة has been paraphrased as الموارد المادية well, Basharir. Uh, as I said, this is just one example of uh, two examples of uh, paraphrasing, and everyone has uh, one's own style of uh, paraphrasing things. And then comes the stage where we see whether this paraphrasing is good or not good. So the reasons for incompleteness in paraphrasing. So we paraphrasing as a reason for translation error now we 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 discuss the reasons for incompleteness in paraphrasing is very important uh, there are major three reasons that have been mentioned lack of memory uh, because the as i dis just discussed uh, the steps translation steps understanding source text is the first step first step Converting meanings to target text, literal and uh, unidiomatic uh, rendering, of course, and, and there is another step, and then returning to the expression level of source text, and then what happens uh, at this level, students' memory fades. I mean, they are tired, so lack of memory, or maybe because of their uh, tired memory. So this is the reason for incompleteness in. Paraphrase. Reason number one: lack of memory. And explanation explanation is this: that because they are going through different uh, sequenced steps, uh, you know, well-formed sequenced steps, and they are going through the training. So when they reach the last step, they their memory fades. So they uh, lack in uh, in uh, completing the paraphrase. And also the other reason is lack of confidence on part of the student to stick to their free version uh, because they think that uh, they should follow the source text, they should be loyal because the concept of loyalty or uh, fear of committing a mistake in translation does not allow them or does not give them a confidence uh, to do this uh, paraphrasing. Another reason actually in the previous uh, page this is a and this should be written or read as b it's not a so lack of self-confidence on part of the translators and as i said they why they do not attain that confidence because primarily they have uh, very you know they think that the source text is a sacred uh, entity and they they are bound to respect it so they try to be near to the structure of the words of the source text. They, they try to avoid paraphrasing. Another reason. Reason number three, which is C, is not B, written here is a mistake. So it should be read as C, taking word as the unit of translation. Another mistake is that translators, they usually, when they, when they, they translate, and especially in, the, in, in their early stages, uh, they see each word as a unit of translation because the unit of translation uh, if, if you make the word as a unit of translation most probably you will 
commit all these mistakes mentioned earlier and the causes and also paraphrasing. Hence, paraphrase has not the status of a proper lexical items. Uh, to explain this point, I need you to I need you to go back to maybe this one. Her life span years of incredible change for women and we considered it as translation from the source language. And now see the paraphrase her totally her lifespan has become she lived to some extent no problem uh, through an era of years of and then uh, incredible changes liberating reform and for women so I think those who can do this paraphrasation have the confidence that whatever they are saying is according to the to the basic theme or the meaning of the source text. Uh, this uh, was actually included for your uh, exercise, although during the lecture I cannot conduct this uh, exercise, but uh, better you do it. Uh, this this is this is uh, a text on my right side is the source text in Arabic, on my left side is the translation. But I should take you to the next page. So this one, I just take took these uh, sentences from uh, from the previous text and hence we have this uh, that we have translation of course and this is uh, mostly a, a translation before paraphrasing and actually it is a translation before paraphrasing inna mabda'a you can see mabda'a has been translated as principle of cooperation mabda'a ta'awun ma bayl muslimina and then the red color comes من غير تنازل أو تهوين لعقيدة الإسلام أو جزء منها without surrendering تنازل or degrading تهوين the Islamic belief لعقيدة الإسلام or any part of them مبدأ دلت عليه السنة النبوية في الكثير من المواضع has been demonstrated by the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him on many occasions ومن أبرزها ما جاء في قصة صلح الحديبية most notably من أبرزها most notably ما جاء في during the time of reconciliation at Hudaybiyah the point again which I want to emphasize here that the available translation on this page is just a translation without paraphrasing and the exercise that I indicated too earlier and I usually ask the student to paraphrase, paraphrase this translation, English translation, uh, for the sake of, uh, not for the sake of uh, do, how to do paraphrasing, but for the sake of understanding what paraphrasing is primarily at this stage. And as a teacher, or as a teacher in future, inshallah, you people should go through this uh, exercise yourself so that you you know understand uh, uh, the significance of uh, of uh, paraphrasing which is the sixth cause of uh, translational error with this we can move on to the last point here in this lecture which is uh, pedagogical considerations uh, so we have discussed uh, uh, here two major things is one what is translation error and the second is what are the major causes of translational errors uh, six major causes have been discussed so let's take some pedagogical considerations uh, the takeaways so as teachers what should we uh, keep in our mind number one teaching should provide a series of strategies to handle causes of interferences how to avoid interferences and uh, this aspect should be should be uh, you know the responsibility of the, of the teachers teachers should warn students against false friends this is very very important we have seen false friends earlier and the teachers should warn students against them that they are especially keeping in view the language pair because this is nothing in general here if you are translating from uh, english into arabic i think false friends are not too much 
and if but if you are translating from arabic into urdu or if you 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 will face you will find a lot of faults friend but if you are translating from arabic arabic into chinese you will not find faults friends in that case so warnings should be put into perspective and specific cases should be analyzed this is very important that the warning about uh, the interferences of course should be put into the perspective mean in the context in the examples and cases should be analyzed of course this is a long process it cannot take place in one course or in in two courses rather it should be uh, kept in mind during the whole program students should be taught uh, that words may have meanings which are not included in a dictionary very very important practical consideration which is uh, which should be inculcated in the minds of the students that words may have meanings which are not included in dictionaries students should be taught how to guess meanings of words from the context i would only add here that this should not be this strategy should not be used in 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 the very early days of uh, translation courses because for that students need to have some background knowledge need to have some experience classroom translation experience and then they should be exposed to this strategy they should be taught how to guess meanings of words from the context self confidence should be built about guessed meaning self confidence is a is a great mercy you know is a, is, a, is a big thing in all human endeavors second or phonal language competence should be enhanced if the teacher finds that some of the students they uh you know they lack competence in second language or phonal language uh, i would add the word the first language i mean your mother tongue so they should you know emphasize the wish they should ask the students to take some courses additional courses additional readings additional listening additional writing etc all the linguistic activities to strengthen their uh, linguistic competence students should be made aware of the context and their importance in understanding the meaning this is again very important students should be made aware of the context and their importance in understanding uh, the the meanings you know this is uh, this is uh, a point which is which should be constant in teaching of translation courses they should be made aware of the importance of culturally bound words and expressions and i think we have uh, already discussed about this too much somewhere in this course or another course so it should be very clear teachers should focus on the vocabulary buildings of the students of course there are different techniques for vocabulary building Uh, through reading uh, through uh, uh, writing through listening there are different techniques that teachers should use for vocabulary building paraphrasing techniques and procedures should be taught systematically these paraphrasing techniques are, uh, are very important and actually uh, they rely on the linguistic competence of the students and uh, the techniques should also should be of course provided uh, by the teacher and the student should be trained how to grasp that uh, technique uh, in their translation dear students uh, i we have talked uh, you know extensively on, on the error oriented approach and the remaining uh, approaches of course is uh, too long but i want to manage the time and my plan is that i in the next uh, lecture i would record uh, i would try to briefly talk about the remaining approaches uh, because i want two more lectures in this course uh, within the time left for us in this semester with uh, of course you have presentations and etc so one lecture for the remaining approaches so try to briefly go through scan the main points of of the 
of the remaining approaches. We cannot go into the details right now and I think the, the taking the crux, taking the sub, you know, substantial information, just the summary of, 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 of the remaining approaches would be enough, uh, keeping in with the time and requirement. And another lecture on the, on the last chapter which, have, which is there in your book which is about the effort models of interpreting. And I want to record uh, uh, that second lecture on that topic again. Uh, the, the, the you know focusing on the main points on the summary and on the most important things that have been discussed in that chapter. I hope that you got my plan and I hope you would follow my plan. And for the next class, uh, prepare uh, the the remaining part, remaining part uh, re this chapter. And inshallah, the last lecture will be on the effort models of uh, interpreting. Uh, take very good care of uh, yourself, and I hope today's experience, experiment, uh, recording the lecture without my face, I want to get feedback from you how it went and what are the benefits on pros and cons. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.